Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I have got something that I'm going to call the mother load to share with you. Something that I've been holding on to for over a year now, waiting for the right moment to share with you guys. And I just decided today's the day. It seems like a good one. So we're going to share that with you. I've never seen a bigger, a bigger haul in my life of these particular items on YouTube ever. They may exist, but I haven't seen them. So I'm gonna share that with you. But first, we've got a little bit of a shop work to do, and that is fixing the Dake Press. It's got some annoying issues, right? That I've been dealing with ever since I got this thing and I've been too lazy to fix it, but today's the day. So let's break into this. I'll show you what's wrong with it. We'll get it repaired, and then I will share with you the mother load. So the repair that needs done to this tape press is pretty simple really, and it's needed this ever since that I got it. It's been broken for who knows how long. What is broken is the cable lift system that raises and lowers this table. At some point in this press's life, I think somebody has tried to raise the table up without the, you know, they pulled the pins, they raised the table up, and I think they've tried to press on something just by the support of these uh, two steel cables and that didn't go so well and uh, broke one of the cables bent one of the pulley supports and moving this table up and down without this cable system it's kind of a pain it can be done but i find myself not doing it and running this ram down way farther than it should to get to the items that i'm pressing on and i just don't think that's a good idea we need to fix the problem so i can use this thing you know properly in my opinion this press is absolutely awesome. I love everything about it. I really do. It's patina, it's heritage, you know, it's size. It's just an awesome press and I want to get it functioning the way that it should. So check out this really nice cast bracket, built-in worm drive uh, pulley here, connected to two steel cables, one that runs directly down to a pin on the uh, press table, and then one, I believe, that run up over a pulley here, over the hydraulic press, over a pulley, and then down uh, to this other part of the cable there. So let's see if we can't pull these cables off, get their lengths or uh, their approximate lengths, and remake them. Hopefully we can and that there's not any tricks to this. Uh, and, uh, you know, remake them, get them installed, and have this thing working the way that it should. So a lot of you guys may remember not too long ago, in this place here where this press sits, I had a 50 ton. It was a Harbor Freight press. That's not gonna work. Uh, I ended up letting my brother use that in his shop. I didn't need two presses. The press that was here, the big red one, you know, it functioned fine. There was nothing wrong with it. It, it was a little bit on the large side. It was a 50 ton press. And once I got this one, you know, I didn't need two presses in the shop, so I just uh, let my brother use that in his because uh, his shop because he didn't have one. So this is my only shop press now, and that is uh, another big reason why I want to get this cable lift system repaired. So this is just quarter inch cable here, nothing special. I've got some stainless steel a uh, quarter inch cable uh, over behind the camera that we're going to be replacing this with. And uh, it's looking like this is just one cable instead of two. They've just got it uh, wrapped through the pulley here. That's pretty neat. thought it was two. Okay, pretty neat. They just routed that right through, through the middle. So here is our replacement cable. It's stainless, quarter inch. I actually bought this when I was supporting the old block wall here, uh, tied into the floor with some come-alongs to hold this, uh, what was a block wall from falling over into the creek so I could get it disassembled. This is what's left of that. Probably 
about right here. We'll put some tape on this. That way when we cut it, the cables don't uh, fray out. Stick us in the hand. So if you guys look up here, you'll see a pulley and it's just supported by a bolt. And I believe that it's not captured, so it can just self-center wherever this cable really wants to ride. This pulley can just slide back and forth. It's the same on the other side, except the other side, this, uh, the bolt is really badly bent. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can get that out of there and get it straightened up. Yeah, of course, that would be five eighths. So this is old uh, uh, square-headed hardware, pretty neat, and I'm sure this has probably never been out, at least since, since this thing's been a press. Wow, that thing's bent. Hopefully we can straighten that up. I'd like to keep that if I can. So I would say that that's pretty bent. If only we had a good way to put pressure on the bent areas in a focused way, right? We could straighten that out. Three eight sixteen. Where is the three eight sixteen? Surely there's one in here. Three eight twenty four. Where three eight sixteen? Right there. go. Far from perfect, but it's usable. There we go. It was easy enough.
We've got buckets in the way. Goodness. Now I gotta raise the table back up to get the buckets out of the way. Oh, goodness. See why this is a pain? I wouldn't be if I didn't have so much stuff in the way. On the pulley. On the pulley. All right. Now I'll attach this one. Well, before I attach this one, I should probably get a wind on, should I, Cora, get a wind on this? Probably so. Okay, now, let's hook it up. Wanna help? Where's my ratchet at? What'd you do with it? <laughs> Here, stand right there, okay? Just right there, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Are you helping? There we go. We got it, didn't we, girl? I think we got it. Should we raise the table and see if it works? Hmm? We should, should we? Yeah, we should. All right, so I guess it's the moment of truth, and I would, I would guess this hasn't worked probably longer than I've been on this planet. Look at that. That's so nice. Working just like it should. I like the way, because it's a worm drive, it won't go, go backwards. There's no lock needed. That is nice. That is very nice. Look at that. That is awesome. Well, we fixed it, guys. We fixed it. And then before you press on it, you take the load off. Right, that way when you press on the table, you're pressing on the pins and not the cable. Now lower it, lift it up, pull the pins. Lower it down. There we go. I like it, I like it a lot. Press repaired. All right, so I have been saving these for well over a year. Now keep in mind, this is only half of what I've got. The other half I have opened, but I figured I would save this, this lot uh, so we could open them together as close to as live as possible. I guess I'll show you the other, the other lot of items that I got as well. Now, let me first before we open these, say that this is not at all a bragging session. Personally, I'm humbled that I was chosen to hold on to these and that uh, the viewer of the channel, who's ex-military, saved these from the scrap pile, so, or from the recycling bin. So I am very, very thankful to get these. Let me put that out there. And uh, you know, I can't wait to show you what's in these boxes. I can't wait to see what's in them. 
but to be honest. So because I have an idea of what's in these boxes, we're gonna be opening up a box. I'm not gonna make you watch me open up and unwrap each individual piece that's in here. So there'll be some fast forwarding. So just you know, keep that in mind. But as we empty a box, we'll stop. We'll briefly talk about the contents and then we'll, we'll move on, right? Because we don't wanna take forever opening up these. All right, so box number one, actually it's box number 40. But anyway, it's our box number one. Check that out. And these boxes are individually wrapped horizontal milling cutters of all shapes and all sizes. So that is a very nice radius cutter, right? That is a 7 16 radius cutter. And we have our work cut out for us, opening up all of these boxes and <laughs> eyeballing all these cutters. Another radius cutter. Wow, that's awesome. So we'll stop periodically, you know, and discuss any ones that uh, are uh, of special interest or, uh, you know, that are unique. Right, check out that. Dual radius. Nice. So there's a theme to this box. Just like there was a theme to the boxes that I'd opened in the past, uh, the gentleman who packaged these went through a lot of effort to make sure that these did not get damaged and that they were kept in boxes of like cutters. So I have no doubt that basically all the cutters in this box, or at least the vast majority of them, are going to be very similar to this, radius cutters. Just, it's amazing that this stuff still exists. And I am, like I said, humbled to get to hold on to these things. So that's all of box number one. It contained just a ton of beautiful radius cutters. Okay, box number two. This one's a little bit lighter. So let's see what is inside of box number two. Oh wow. This appears to be slitting saws. That's a brown and sharp manufacturing. It's a six and three thirty seconds. Six by three thirty three thirty seconds. So it's a it's a it's a bunch of slitting saws. A whole bunch. There are some different cutters here. All right. That is a uh, horizontal uh, milling rougher, plain mill. Uh, man, these, I have not run up on a cutter that has been in bad shape as far as the teeth go. Everyone has been you know, extremely sharp, uh, good used condition. Nice. Goodness gracious. I'm assuming that all of these are pretty much the same. I'm not going to make you go through all of the opening 
of, of these uh, being slitting saws because they pretty much all look the same. Uh, here's one off the bottom of the stack. Yep, six inch slitting saw. So we'll just hold on to these and uh, I'll open those at a later date. Here's one still in the original brown and sharp the metal slitting saw package. It's been used, but still nice saw. So this box contains, looks like another stack of slitting saws and some, some other uh, plain milling cutters, let's see, rougher. Sorry, I'm trying to do this as fast as possible. Regular. Rougher. These are, no, nope, a couple larger ones down here. Larger one. Oh. Oh wow, this is a bunch of small cutters, awesome little cutter. This is going to take forever to open these. custom cutter. Somebody's ground that for, I don't know, uh, some special use. You see that quite often. You know, the manufacturers of these cutters may not make the cutter that you need, so the, the tool and die guy, or not the tool and die, tool and cutter grinder uh, that most shops would have had back then, that guy would have ground a specific cutter for the needs of the manufacturing. would have also made sure that all the cutters were sharp, right? These came from uh, the U.S. military, and uh, that's why I believe almost every cutter that I've seen out of all of these cutters that I've got uh, were ready to use, basically, sharp-wise. You know, they didn't burn one up and stick it back on the shelf. They had to be ready to use at all times.
<laughs> that Garfield, he's crazy. Man, that box had, I don't know, well over a hundred cutters in it. Mostly slitting saws of all different thicknesses and sizes, right? Well, mostly around three and a half to four inches, but all sorts of different thicknesses. There's some milling cutters in there as well. Really, really nice box. Let's uh, move on to another one. Wow, just a ton of radius cutters. Goodness. It's an inch and a quarter radius. This is an inch and three eighths. What a cutter. another inch and three-eighths.
So that is quite a bit of cutters. And if I was going to guess a weight, I mean, not exaggerating at all, I would say every bit, I don't know, 35,000 pound, maybe 36. So let's start in this corner here. Now we're just quickly going to gloss over these because there's so many we could never ever touch on on all the different types and sizes and whatnot. Mostly radius cutters minus these slitting saws here uh, in this corner of all different different types. Hopefully that comes in focus. And it seems like we've got from inch and a half all the way down to a sixteenth, at least in most of these anyway. So a full spectrum of, of radius cutters, even double-sided, right? Super nice. Now there are, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of duplicates as far as the radius cutters go, although there are some. There are a ton of slitting saws here, stuff like that. I don't need 10 of the same cutter. So my idea here is to sort through these cutters, put all the duplicates off to the side and hand those out to folks that stop by the shop and stuff that want to beef up their, uh, you know, horizontal milling collection because there's no reason for me to have 10 of the same cutter, right? I'd much rather see other people enjoy them than them just sit on my shelf uh, collecting dust. So I'm not going to be keeping all these, just, you know, I want to put that out there. But there is a major selection of cutters here. In fact, I mean, it makes sense. This was a, what, this was the cutters that stocked a military machine shop's horizontal mill. And, I mean, you know, they would have a cutter for most situations. And it looks like that's what we got here. So radius cutters, slitting saws. Uh, let's, uh, let's move on. And uh, then I'll show you what I think uh, at last. I'll show you what I think is the crown jewel or the cutters out of this lot that I'm most excited about. Not that they're not all great, but you get the idea. I've got my favorites. So let's quickly gloss over these boxes right here because these here are your standard type milling cutters that everybody's pretty much seen. Nothing out of the ordinary here. We've got a stagger tooth that looks like a six inch with an inch and a quarter arbor. Uh, pretty nice cutter there. And we've got standard milling cutters like this from, I think, about eight inch, maybe eight and a half. Uh, all the way down to, uh, what is it, uh, you know, probably two and a half, three inch. So standard milling cutters for the most part. There are a few unique cutters in here. Here's one right here. Uh, that's just a you know, 90 degree to the table on this side, but eight degrees on this side. So custom ground for some specific job. You know, the chances of using a cutter like that are pretty slim, but, you know, if you had to make one of those, it'd take you quite some time on a cutter grinder. So, you know, still a, a nice cutter. This box here, just uh, um, angled cutters. This is one of two boxes. So they were really outfitted. Uh, the shop that had these cutters was really outfitted with, uh, you know, angled cutters. We've got some slab mills here. Standard straight tooth, or not straight tooth, but uh, smooth tooth. Then we've got some roughing, uh, roughing milling cutter, or plain mill, whatever you want to call it there. Really, really nice selection. Slitting saws, more of the same, right? Just different size. So let me show you, let me show you my favorite cutters out of this entire lot. So I've already said this, but I'm gonna say it again. Larry did an absolutely amazing job packaging all these. Not only did he wrap each individual cutter in paper and keep it with like cutters in their boxes, but he also made holders for these, which are what I'm most excited about, they're gear cutters. He kept them all together, right? And they're uh, in their class or Dimetrol pitch. Now there are multiples in some of these that I've seen and I'm going to be sorting these as well. But check that out. Gear cutters that I really thought I would never own a selection of gear cutters like this and, and I couldn't imagine trying to purchase these individually. Check out these back here. Slitting saws. Just by the hundreds. Different thicknesses, right? Different arbor sizes. You know, 
just an amazing selection of sledding saws. Now a lot of these will be handed out, right? No reason for me to keep that many. But just amazing selection of cutters, that's all I can say. Uh, and I'm blown away and, and humbled uh, to get them. Check out these slab mills. So being as these cutters come out of a U.S. military machine shop and outfitted their horizontal mill, I wouldn't expect anything less than a cutter to cover about any circumstance that you can run into. And when it comes to a horizontal mill, uh, it's dependent a lot on the cutters that you have. So having these really opens up a lot of uh, possibilities for me. And I just can't say thanks enough to Dan and Michelle very wonderful couple who brought these down to me. They actually had to make two trips because it's so much weight and they did it in a standard passenger car so you can imagine the weight uh, and the sag on the back of the vehicle uh, just from the weight of these cutters and not to forget Larry who saved these from a scrap pile. I, I couldn't imagine these going to a dumpster. I think about that make about anybody you know <laughs> wince because there is a a lot of value here uh, to the machinist community anyway. Although they are, um, you know, yesterday's cutters, that's for sure. Uh, not much value to a lot of shops. Uh, to the one-off shop or the prototyping shop, these still have tremendous value. And, uh, and I'm glad that they were saved. So big thanks to Larry for <laughs> wrapping these in individual packages to paper to keep them safe keeping them in like-minded box, or keeping like cutters together, building fixtures or little holders for you know, the gear cutters. Just an amazing amount of effort that he went through to, to not only save them, but to make sure that they were uh, in good condition or stayed that way. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. And uh, I'll see you next time. Ain't that right, girl? Let's go to the house. Come on. Careful. Cora.